Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome, welcome to our fourth edition, fourth panel, if you could believe it, of the um, of our Hugo Girl Ministry of Sports and Community Developments um, panel series uh, for women, women in sport, women athletes, weekend warriors. Um, we've been um, we've been doing this program for quite a number of, of, of months now, I, and I have to say that um, it has built, it has grown, and we've really been enjoying the conversations as part of the, the Ministry's Pink Rain campaign, their panel discussion for 2021. Um, we're coming to you live on, on the Ministry's Facebook page. I know it's a wet and bleak, um, rainy, rainy, rainy Wednesday. So I just ask and hope that you all are safe wherever you're coming to us from, that you are safe and that you're staying dry. Um, we're hoping to have a real looking forward, actually, I am looking forward definitely to having a great conversation with our panel for this week. And we might be joined, uh, we may be joined um, by the Minister of Sport and Community Development, Ms. Shampa Kajo, um, has a very packed, you know, naturally has a very packed agenda um, but she may be joining us, so I look forward to, you know, maybe hearing a few words from her. But as we continue, this, this month we're looking at the question of careers in sport and the different opportunities that women, young girls and women have to pursue um, a career in sport in Trinidad and Tobago. And in fact, um, it's not just in Trinidad and Tobago. Sport is global. It, you, you know, your career can take you anywhere. We naturally assume and we, we, we recognize that being an athlete, a professional athlete, is in and of itself a great career, a consuming career. But when you look at athletes, if you're looking at the Olympics over the last few days, when you look at these athletes performing at the highest level, you know and you can appreciate that they are coming with a team of people behind them, supporting them in various ways, whether it is um, their physiotherapists, the physiotherapy part, strength and conditioning, the actual coaches, um, even their brand managers, business managers, the, the lawyers, um, their host of career opportunities um, for women in particular uh, in, in the various areas of sport. And so I'm really happy today to be joined by three very interesting and accomplished women in their own right, um, who will talk with us about um, the countless opportunities uh, for developing a rewarding, enriching career in, in sport in Trinidad and Tobago. Let me introduce to you our first panelist, Ms. Nazira Mohammed. And Nazira is the media and content officer for Cricket West Indies. So she's in a she's in a career field that's very close to my heart. And I promise Nazira that we're not going to spend too much time talking about West Indies cricket today. We all know that everybody's you know we're all nursing. There's some broken hearts being nursed right now, um, and we recognize that. So I commiserate Nazira. She's actually the first woman to hold that title working with the West Indies men's cricket team. Currently, she's pursuing a certificate in sports marketing with the Rajasthan Royals and Deakin University in Australia. Um, so you can understand and appreciate how far and why her, her job takes her. Nazira is a strong advocate for equal opportunity within the sports industry and a firm believer that a, being a woman does not disqualify you from any job or role once you're capable and qualified to do the job. And I don't think you'll get any disagreement from any one of us sitting here, as well as the countless um, young women and you know, young girls and, and women who are no doubt watching. A native of the United States, our next panelist, Ms. Jochelle Mitchell, 
has spent her life in the pursuit of education and creating opportunities for young people to pursue education and professional opportunities. She's the executive director of Invisible Giants Legacy and Leadership Foundation. I love that, that, that title, the Invisible Giants. It's a nonprofit organization that provides youth and adults from her hometown in Flint, in the state of Michigan, with educational and professional development opportunities and quality of life resources. And then um, finally, but by no means least, Marissa Gibson Bailey is an accredited sports scientist, physiologist, and the founder and principal consultant of the MG Sport and Exercise Science Consultancy. She was the first performance and performance analysis and testing officer at the sport company of Trinidad and Tobago for the Elite Sport Development and Performance Unit, pioneering the sports and exercise physiology support service for all eligible national amateur and elite athletes. So ladies, welcome to our program. Thank um, you. Thank you. Distinguished wet um, resume from each of you. So I know we're going to have a great conversation. We actually had, uh, we actually met for the first time just about a week ago. And uh, um, that introductory discussion might have been a panel in and of itself in terms of the, the work, things we covered. So I'm really looking forward to our discussion. Um, I want to take take us right into, into the discussion and maybe get some insight from the three of you share with us some of your own background and experience, but really, are you seeing a shift in the perception of sport as providing, as being able to provide rewarding and valued careers for women? And you may be living examples of that, but I'm wondering if you are seeing, a, you know, a general shift across the board. Um, and perhaps, um, Jashelle, we can start with you. No problem, first and foremost. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here uh, and to serve on this panel. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, you know, to answer your question, it's definitely an opportunity for women in sport uh, in various capacities to maximize the strength and endurance that's happening across uh, all spectrums of sport at this time. Uh, so it's opportunities on and off the field of play. Uh, in the front office, as you stated, as well as the uh, personal aspect of the mental health and wellness uh, side of things. So plenty of opportunities and great ideas uh, to, to be expanded for women in sport and opportunities that's provided across. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jashel. Mar Marissa, you are a pioneer in a lot of ways and very much working not just in Trinidad and Tobago, across the mm -hmm. region and, and extending internationally. Have you seen that shift as well as you, know, as, as you have pursued your career? Um, what I would say is that it depends on where you are. Um, if I say I'm in Trinidad and Tobago, the shift, I, it wouldn't happen as fast as I would want it to be. But um, globally, you're seeing the shift. You're seeing the shift of women taking up um, leadership roles. You're seeing the shift of women being in sports science. Um, but when you look at Trinidad and Tobago, which is where I am from, I would like to see a greater shift. I think that we have a great understanding of what's happening globally. And it's really understanding what are the barriers um, to making this shift, because I think it's possible. For so me, I, I would like to see a greater shift. Um, in that aspect. Well, I know when we first talked, um, you shared some of your own journey in taking up mm -hmm. this role and some of your experiences working um, working in a sector, in a sport that mm -hmm. some may say is still, you know, is still male dominated, but you are seeing more mm -hmm. and more women's teams coming up and also women yeah. uh, playing different roles. Um, mm -hmm not just in in media but also on the on the, the physiotherapy side are you seeing that shift as well particularly from where you're sitting um it's a bit difficult i must say um there are some barriers that we definitely have to break down um because it's still male dominated and as a female as a young female um you still have to try to make your presence known and it's, it's one of the things that 
I had to analyze and find it very hard mm -hmm. to understand. You know, you you went out, you you get certified, you get accredited, you come back home and you figure that, okay, yes, you'd be as visible as you would want to be, but there's a lot of groundwork that you have to do to get yourself visible. And then there is the, um, you have to fall into a particular circle in order for you to be mm -hmm. visible as a female, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, from that perspective, I, um, I had to take a step back. I had to yeah. reflect and I had to recognize that, listen, um, Trinidad and Tobago is just one country in this world. And why limit yourself just to only being visible or, or join the, the, the culture in that you need to extend yourself to other countries? You have yes. to do that. Yes. It is, that is very important because the culture here in Trinidad is not the same as the culture in the UK or not the yes. same as the culture in Canada, although there may be a lot of similarities, but it is the intensity of it um, in terms of um, the support for women and how they embrace women, especially women who are very much passionate about what they do, as well as being qualified um, in their area of expertise. Yeah, yeah, and you've hit on some really critical um, issues there for us in terms of, you know, breaking new ground and yeah. um, finding the right support mechanism, you know, how yes. do you make yourself visible? How you know what sort of network do you build as well because let's be real it's about networking mm -hmm. as well and, have, and letting people well, know who you are and what your capabilities are and that I'm is one, very key yeah yeah it, it, it's critical so nazira from your perspective um what has your journey been like um i think you know there's a lot of value in you sharing that with us and also you know your own perspective in terms of the question of changing perspectives and or perceptions and shifting and breaking new ground for women in sport um as marissa said you know there's a slow shift in trinidad and tobago and in the region uh moving away from that patriarchal society that we're accustomed to and i think when i became a sports journalist in trinidad in 2013 i think it was I was the only active woman in the sports journalism industry that would go out on assignments regularly. So it would be myself and maybe five or six other guys and cameramen. Um, I will always remember my, one of my first assignments that I went to was a horse racing um, for the derby. Um, and I walked in, obviously, wearing my hijab and everybody in the room was like, you can see that their brain is t um, thinking... Mm -hmm if she's in the correct room or something like that so it's something yeah. that i've kind it's of become right accustomed place. to yeah. correct it's something that i've become accustomed to to always being the only woman in a situation in a yeah. sports mm -hmm. situation um in a sport in the sports industry and then you know moving regionally there are a few other women sports journalists um who are you know well known in their countries like jamaica has mm -hmm. a few barbados has a few and those two apart from trinidad are probably the more proactive ones in terms of getting women involved in sports journalism and, and covering sports um my experience is that i mean i tell people and i eat this regularly i'm very much glad to be born a west indian and to be born here in the caribbean because of the fact that um, you know, we have a much more liberal society than several other um, regions across the world. And a lot of people see me with the hijab and see me. And they, uh, the first thing they ask is if your parents allow you to have a job as you have and to do and travel and go where you go by yourself and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, you know, my parents have always said from small that... I choose the career that I want to choose. I choose the life path that I want to choose and they will support me in whatever it is I do. And nothing became more evident than when I went to India in 2018 with the West Indies men's team. Um, obviously, I'm of East Indian descent, Indo-Trinidadian, and wearing the hijab and a lot of folks thought that I was from India. So I got second looks and even though I was with the West Indies men's team, I still got looked secondly um after the players and because they were all men obviously and then when the, a lot of people kind of 
saw me around more frequently, they would be like, oh, she's actually part of the West Indies men's team and not an Indian working as a support for the West Indies men's team. And it was ironic because every match that I went to, there were probably three or four women who were into sports journalism, writing about cricket and stuff like that. Um, so it was always nice to see another woman in the arena in India. And it brings me back to the Caribbean where everybody sit together, everybody chat together, you know, my male counterparts, etc. So to see that and to see the comparison in that part of the world compared to where we are here in the Caribbean, because nothing is more evident than carnival time. Everybody enjoyed themselves, everybody loved themselves, everybody line pe- party fetters won. Um, even when you go cricket and you sit down in the oval, yeah. everybody heckling, everybody cheering, same thing is one family. So my experiences as a woman in sports journalism first and then moving on to the West Indies men's team has really opened my eyes to see the the differences that we have and the differences that we shared. And I said, as I said earlier, you know, it's a s- slow progression. But Mm -hmm. there's a progression nonetheless. And like I've had young girls come up to me and they'd be like, you know, is it something that I can get into? And I said, if it is Mm -hmm. that you want to get it, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, my Twitter is open. Anybody wants to get information, just at me and I can respond to you. That's excellent. That's excellent. And it's important for making those connections and also for people to see that you can break new ground. You know that it is that it, there's nothing preventing you from breaking new ground if you if you have to if you if that's what you desire. And as I as speaking about breaking new ground, I want to take the opportunity to bring in the Minister of Sport and Community Development now, uh, Minister Shamfa Kuju, um, who is able to to spend a little bit of time with us and maybe share some remarks. Minister, if you're on the line, um, welcome. You know we're happy to have you join us um, and to, and to hear welcome. to hear from you today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Westfield Duke. Mrs. Duke Westfield, sorry. I am really pleased to have you with us. And I want to commend you on the amazing job that you have been doing in uh, being our main host and uh, being in charge of leading the discussions here on uh, our Pink Rain campaign and our You Go Girl panel. I'm really excited to be here today. Every now and then I get the opportunity to drop in, uh, to drop in and to listen to uh, the conversation and the information that we are sharing to uh, the listening public. Uh, before I say anything else, let me recognize the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Sport and Community uh, Development, Mrs. Angela Edwards, all the other members of staff here at the ministry. We have an amazing um, group of people in the division of sport and in community and in uh, communication, sorry, that have been just really putting their shoulders to the wheel and making this happen. This uh, Pink Green campaign is a new idea and we're finally getting to execute it even in the midst of this pandemic. I want to um, really thank and commend and even salute the ladies who are part of our panel today who are taking their time out and volunteering to share their knowledge and their nuggets of wisdom with us here today. Of course, we have um, Mo, I know as Mo Mo, or uh, yeah. <laughs> Morris. Uh, we went to high school together. I know her as an right. athlete. And it's just yeah. amazing to remember this young girl loving sports so much and now growing up and having the opportunity to not just play, but to develop yourself in the area of sport and uh, to be a scientist, a psychologist, to be a technical uh, professional in the area of sport. So I salute you, uh, Marisha. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I want to also um, recognize uh, Nasira Mohammed, and it's a pleasure to finally meet you and to have you on our panel. I've always looked at and admired uh, Miss Mohammed over the years. I'm like, who is this little uh, Muslim woman so out of place? <laughs> because, you know, people would look at it like she is a woman in sport wearing a hijab on the sidelines in the mix of the cricket. And it's just amazing to see. I did a sport 
a conversation on, on Twitter a couple of weeks ago and she was in the audience and she said, hey, I can, I see you doing pink rain and I would love to do this. But I didn't have her information prior to that. I was trying to get communication. Please get onto that Muslim lady. So it was just so wonderful that she was in the mix in the uh, Twitter space and offered to come on board. So I am humbled by this opportunity to sit on the same panel with you and I really admire the work and what you're doing. Um, of course, uh, I must uh, salute and say oop even to uh, Miss uh, uh, Mitchell, Jashel Mitchell. And Jashel Mitchell um, is uh, tuning in, logging in, being a part of this uh, panel from the US. And she has had uh, extensive experience in the area of sport, working in this male dominated field of the NFL, being responsible for um, for integration and and you know getting other people and getting as many people as as involved in and included in this whole matter of uh, sport and this whole matter of, of, of football. She's doing her, some personal work by owning the Mitch Match Ventures and she's the executive director of Invisible Giants Legacy and Leadership Foundation. Jashel also is my sorority sister, my profite, and I um, attended Bethune Cookman College. We are a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So I am pleased to have you on Soror and for you to take the time all to be a part of this um, this panel and to share with us your experience in sport from the USA, working on inclusiveness and promoting women in sport. Now the Pink Rain campaign uh, had been an idea for as long as about three years and we started uh, with women's cricket for the Caribbean Premier League uh, in 2018. We did some work in it uh, in supporting road races, getting women up off the couch and uh, involved in running and being physically active again. Then we had COVID and we said, you, you know what, we can't allow this amazing idea to just rest. So when we merged the Ministry of Sport with Community Development, the team here in the Ministry of Community Development and Sport just took took it and ran with it. So I commend the team here. What we are trying to do is change this culture in Trinidad and Tobago that speaks to sport being only important as it relates to recreation and um, the actual athlete going out there and competing. We want to uh, show that women can infiltrate, can dominate all areas of sport, can master and could be successful in all areas of sport, whether you're going out there and uh, participating for your physical fitness, whether you're competing, whether you're involved in journalism, whether you're managing, whether you're an administrator in the area of sport, there's room for women in sport and uh, on all levels. And we have to break a culture in certain communities and in certain old school people in Trinidad and Tobago that says uh, sport is something mainly for men or for boys or sport, especially at the school age level, is for people who are not acad academically inclined. So if you're not doing good in your school, we could always play a sport. That has to be, we must, we must really denounce, decry and say no more to that type of culture and find a way to get women involved in sport and seeing sport as a way of developing their career of wealth generation of income create of wealth creation of income generation of building your network and even developing personally and professionally so that is the main aim of the pink green campaign we are highlighting our uh, women in sport on uh, social media we have uh, we are working with the national governing bodies so we can showcase different sport to uh, women of all ages from all areas from all geographical areas of Trinidad and Tobago and of course we have the girls run TT where we are challenging girls to get up off the couch find some time to run 70 miles uh, between now and the end of um, of September and we're giving so many prices so um, today's panelists 
uh, unique in their own right. And I'm thankful that you are with us today. For all of you who have been following and listening and participating and encouraging other women to come on board, I owe you a debt of gratitude. This movement, as it relates to women in sport or involvement or um, and all or success in sport even as a minister of sport i think it's my responsibility to promote women in leadership in sport and to get as many women and girls as possible involved in seeing sport as an avenue that they can uh, strive to be a part of to get involved and to feel comfortable and to teach people to feel comfortable when the woman when a woman is in the room or sitting on the table or being the only woman in the room because many times I've been the only woman at the table or involved in a negotiation or a consultation or sometimes the only female presenter and uh, sometimes they're uncomfortable seeing a young woman doing this and uh, it's amazing I love it so I guess out there and I allow them to hear the clicking on my heels and uh, and learn to respect my contribution uh, to sport and we want to encourage other girls to do so too. So I want to um, just really wish you all the very best in these conversations and may this topic, may this conversation, may these activities that we are doing here go on and live on and take different um, take different forms. Speak about women in sport in schools, in homes, at restaurants. Encourage your girl children to be a part of some kind of sport. And even when you're not physically able to find yourself involved in the, in the group meetings, at the board level and so on, and allow women, support women in finding their rightful place in the in sport development and in developing themselves through sport so to the team here at the ministry thank you to all you lovely ladies who have been a part of the panels over the last couple of months the work has only just started and there's so much more work to be done may we continue to fly the the flag of female participation in sport high and may this work continue from generation to generation so i thank you and i wish you every success in these discussions and all the work that we have ahead so thank you thank you thank you and i hand it back over to you uh mrs best feel uh thank you once again for being with us thank you minister um for sharing those words and i i actually want to thank you as well um, I think the championing, championing this conversation, um, I, you know, I can certainly attest from the very day, very first day that the minister walked into the office in her role, um, this has been, uh, this has been something on, this has been an issue on her platform and she has never strayed mm -hmm. from the conversation and she has not just not strayed from the conversation, but I think she's put, you know, she's put her shoulder um, to it and she mm -hmm. has really really extended and I and I really do appreciate that minister and I also I, you know and I want to want to thank you for that the level of advocacy and um, network being able to rely on her met on her network her sorority mm -hmm. sisters her old friends her community um, mm -hmm. and recognizing that from the community are people who can make that con contribution and being confident enough and willing and open enough to engage them. Mm. You know, that, that Nazira could reach out to the minister via an online network, an online platform mm -hmm. and have a conversation with her and it come back to her. You know, that, mm -hmm. that, speaks, that, that speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think minister, certainly, you know, in my humble space and on behalf yeah. of a lot of women who, you know, really embrace that level of networking. I think we, you know, we really do thank you for, for that contribution, mm -hmm. you know, you and your team at the, at the ministry. So um, I think we all see it and um, yeah. you know, let's continue, let's continue the work, let's continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. Nazira, you were, you know, as you talked about your experience, um, you know, you talked about walking into the room you know, being, you know, being, you know, being people turning to you and wondering, well, you know, what is this, what is this Muslim girl in hijab doing here? You know, is she in the right place, etc. Um, I, re I was recently reading uh, an article in which Anuja Dalvi was quoted, and, and I'm sure a couple of you, you know, must know of her. She was a lone female physiotherapist um, working in your space, Marissa, at the 2020 mm -hmm. IPL. 
And she was talking about the fact that in her country of India, of course, there's still girls are still restricted in different ways from participating mm-hmm. fully in organized sport in her country. And it was something that mm-hmm. she um, she was you know she was lamenting, even though she acknowledged that that the goalposts has shifted a bit and that you're seeing some mm-hmm. change. Um, mm-hmm. We don't have, you know, I, I guess to your point, Nazira, we don't necessarily see restrictions, but there are barriers. And mm-hmm. I think that it's important to acknowledge those barriers. Um, Marissa, you, I, I think you started on it. Um, yes. and, and, you know, I want us to be able to, to really get, get to the heart of that. Um, you know, Marissa, can I start yeah. with you? And, you know, then sure. just that really like you to come in as well because yeah. what's in the NFL you don't see many girls there so you know what are the barriers that you have encountered that you've had to, to explode as well so Marissa I'll turn it to you uh, first of all I just want to thank the Honorable Sham for Kajo for coming on and being a part um, giving her greetings. Uh, if I may teeth that line of respect the clicking of the heels, I love it because um, it is very, very important. Um, when, you, when you're in the field of sport, and when you're in sports, science to be more specifically as a female, um, that male dominance could be very intimidating. And I, I always set back to the point of you have to be very confident in your competencies and skills. Hence the reason I would have sought after global accreditation, first of all. Because to me, most people um, in that field, whether it's male or female, respect global accreditation. They they respect global certification. And um, the fact that you are exposed to international um, you know, learning and skills and, and, and internships, if you, if you may call it that as well, to know that you've worked with the best or being mentored by the best. And what I did, I, I reached out. In, within my network, I reached out to the best. Um, Dr. Barry Fudge is one of the best physiologists that you have in the UK. He was the physiologist for Mufara, Mohammed Mufara, which is a decorated long distance runner. That was my mentor for five years. I went on to um, the United States where I was at one of the USC Olympic sites and I sought after Meg Stone, Margaret Stone, was the first strength and conditioning female being mentored by her as well. So it's it's building that confidence because sometimes you have, and most times you have no control over what people perceive you as. Um, and I say this because you may come across as being very kind and in somebody's perception, it may be something else. So I, I believe in self-confidence. I believe in pursuing what you want internally, um, reflection in order to know that. And you seek out global accreditation that is properly well recognized, that is undisputable, right? And you make sure that your competencies and your skills are in a line with that. So coming into a culture where you, you it's male dominated, um, you make sure that you know, you're not just um, fake it, fake it to make it. I, I don't believe in that. I believe that you have to be very honest. If you don't know something, if you don't know um, or how to do something, there's always the opportunity and to, to learn, to learn from others or to seek out information so that you could be able to be knowledgeable in what you, you don't know. So for me, um, one of the foundational or one of the foundations um, into us as women, um, owning our space, getting others to respect the clicking of the heels is that self-confidence and it comes with self-reflection. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Um, Jashelle, and your, so two things, your experiences working in the NFL in particular, but definitely across the board. And uh, um, talk to us a little bit about that value of education um, that you are seeing as being critical to taking you on that path. It was definitely an opportunity uh, of a lifetime to be a part of the highest level of sports. Um, that goes without saying a great appreciation uh, for my bosses and Roger, Roger Goodell, Troy Benson, the executive vice president of football operations, and Rod Graves, who's now the executive director of the Fritz Pollard Alliance. Um, so without those gentlemen uh, being a champion 
for women in sport, women in administration. Uh, I, I would not have made it to the NFL along with Sam Rappaport. So with the support of some very high profile people who are willing to do the work and willing to support women in various levels of professional sports and collegiate sports, because I came to the NFL from the collegiate space and just having those champions was vital to get to the highest level of sports. Uh, so when you mention you know, kind of barriers and champions, as Marissa stated too, you have to find the best and go learn and, and get under their wing uh, to learn the avenues of how you can uh, kind of, you know, pull here and there and be a sponge on how their leadership style or their management style uh, can be a value to you in your career and your future. So it's definitely, you know, you can't do it by yourself. You have to have champions in your corner and uh, just be willing to do the work. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, 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 another common thread in terms of um, mm -hmm. being proactive, you know, and stepping in oh, yes. into that space. It's oh. not about, you can't sit back and wait for someone to offer something to you. It's, you know, you're not a yeah. child anymore, yeah. and you're not gonna just get an ice cream from somebody because you look cute. So right. it is really about, <laughs> It, it is really yes. about getting in, getting into that space. Ms. Zero, for you, where did you find where did you find your mentors, um, your your mentors, your your champions? You know, as as Marissa called them, as as Jashel called them. Where did you find your your champions? At home. Um, <laughs> my the first one that I had was my grandmother because, I mean, somebody with probably just a basic primary school education um and she raised my mom and my aunt as a single parent after my grandfather died and you know her perseverance and her courage at a time where it was difficult for a woman to be the head of a household and stuff like that and i mean growing up and seeing all my aunts and stuff like that and i always tell people i say i was first introduced to cricket by my grandmother and my aunts because they were usually the ones to watch on tv watching cricket so that was when my love for the sport started. And then obviously going off to university, I did communications. So it just kind of married each other into being a career and being my first love. But also to be a media officer for a cricket team or a sports team, my second mentor came in the form of the previous South Africa men's cricket team. Their media officer was actually a woman. Lorato Mulukatu and she's on Twitter and on Instagram if people want to follow and South Africa were here in the Caribbean I think somewhere between 2013 2015 somewhere around there they had a tri-series and I interviewed her the uh I asked her to interview some of the South African cricketers at the Queen's Park Oval here in Trinidad and obviously I didn't know she was the media officer for the team so when I went, I was asking questions and stuff like that. And I said, you know, can I speak to the media manager? Because I would like to get permission. And they were like, oh, she's over there. And I'm like, it's a woman. And they said, yes. And from that, it clicked in my head. I'm like, maybe I can get the best of both worlds at some point in time. But those two spectrums, a, a, a personal spectrum and a professional spectrum, those two are my... Um, mentors in getting into where i am right now and knowing that i can achieve what i have right now but it comes back to something that marissa said earlier where the first thing that you have to do is overcome yourself and know that mm -hmm. what you want yeah. and what you have to do to achieve mm -hmm. your goal because sometimes your biggest barrier is yourself because if you have self-doubt or you second guess yourself or question yourself yeah. if you're competent enough if you're capable enough that's where your, your first hurdle lies because if you can't get over that you can't have any networking you can't put yourself or train yourself you know academically professionally to get to where you want so your first barrier is yourself if you believe yeah. that you can do it anything else is possible with anybody else being possible yeah yeah, yeah. Mohammed said though, um, yeah. I wanted to say it, and, and for those young persons looking on, 
um, it's not about numbers. It's not about how much people you get into your network. It's the meaningfulness of those relationships. Correct. Because wow. it's, it's not about you, you, you just see somebody that you know and you just you ask to add and then, you know, you have to build relationships so that you get at that point and, and, and it's okay to reach out. I've been at um, the International Student Conference for Sports Science in, in the UK online though. And um, one of the feature speakers and he was saying, do not be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out to professionals. It, based on their personality, definitely they're going to, to respond. I text Lisa Wickham and she responded. You yes. know, I text Gail Elder Cummins and she responded because of the need. So you have to you you have to build relationships, make sure that it's meaningful and it's going to last. It's going to have that long term um, effect that you would want because, you know, you 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 want to learn and learn is ongoing. You know, so it's not about numbers. It's not don't transfer the the usual um, how you call it um, being on social media is amount of followers you have, whatever. Mm -hmm make sure that your relationships are meaningful. And I just wanted to yeah. plug that in. Plug oh, that's, it, that's, 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 ironic. that's ironic that you said that. <laughs> ironic that you said that because I actually got my job via social media. What young people would call these days as shooting your shot. I did that in 2016 and just replied to a tweet. And yeah. a year and a half afterwards, I was given the opportunity to apply for a job. There was a vacancy and here I am now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you know, you really never know. And and that yeah. point that you, that, you know, you made about the self-talk in your head, you know, mm -hmm. that little, you know, sometimes that very annoying little voice that, that is mm -hmm. talking you down from the, the, the ledge or, or pulling you back or just, you know, discouraging you from, from taking that step forward. You know, um, I read recently, Simone Biles was talking about the fact that she had to get mm -hmm. over that that internal conversation yeah. that was taking place, mm -hmm. you know, that that back and forth. And I think, you yeah. know, we have to, we do have to sort of quiet that noise a little bit. Um, and what I, what I we do know, agree with you. I yeah. do agree with you. Um, that self-reflection, I would say to you, um, in my journey in accreditation, um, that institute um, demands that you do self-reflection everything that you do for example if i have a client i'm dealing with a team every time that you finish a session you have to get in there what went well what didn't go so well how would you approach it the other time um what do you need as a person to um to help give a positive impact because most times your impact for me is not always in the lab space or is not on the field doing assessments or monitoring sometimes your impact and most times in real life, our impact is the things that come out of our mouth, the things, our yeah. actions, you know? So um, I, I, I do believe in reflection. I do believe in looking with yourself and finding time, getting away from all the hustle and bustle and finding out what it is that you want because the careers in sport, they are vast, they're ever-changing. Um, and you have to see okay, within yourself, what do I want to do? What impact? do I want to have? And, and in order to do that, you have to spend time with yourself. Yeah. What are my competencies? What am I good at? What am I not good at? Yeah, so that you know what you need to pursue in terms of continuous professional development. And you pursue that passionately, like myself. There's nothing or anyone could tell me. I always have my coat, a, a white coat that I have with my name on it, and that was before I graduated. It's always in my suitcase traveling because you never know where you're going to end up. And I want to be in that space. It excites me being in a lab space, doing testing and dealing with athletes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's important, you know. And, and just, Shell, as, as Marissa was talking, it occurred to me, and I just want to add that um, we are live. Um, people are, you know, I, our audience is on Facebook. Um, please send in your questions. Um, if you have questions for any of our panelists, please go ahead and send them in and we will we'll get to them, you know, to keep the conversation going. Um, just, Jashal, I just wanted to, to come back to you on, on something. You know, um, as people think about, as young women, maybe thinking about careers, um, there's also a practical side to this as well. You know, can I, can I make a living? Um, in, 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 in this industry or, or, you know, from that, from this side, can I, can I do what I really love to do? 
you know, that puts that smile on, on my face, the kind of smile that you, you see with Nazira when she talks about cricket or Marissa, you mm -hmm. know, as she's talking about <laughs> being a scientist or even you. Can I marry that with the very practical paying a rent, paying a mortgage, eating, <laughs> those basic <laughs> things I need to do. Um, Get to eat. You know, I, I think we need to we, we need to also explore that myth as well, you know, that you can make a rewarding, successful career in sport. No question. Uh, there's definitely opportunities for uh, young women uh, to have a career in sport. Um, there's, I'm actually a part of a group, uh, the Black Women Administrators, Athletic Administrators, uh, that uh, have various roles. If it's academics, administration, compliance, um, you know, the deputy AD, the uh, commissioner uh, of a conference, uh, the athletic director um, of a university or a college. So uh, it varies of just the support uh, for women in various roles. But yes, you can make a living. Uh, it's all, again, I just tell my mentees to map out that top five location that you desire to live in. Map out that top five university uh, that you, you know, if they gave you a call, you're on the next thing smoking to go take this job. Um, but just be mindful, too, that um, in certain areas, you know, of course, you got to go and show and prove yourself in, in different areas. So just because you have a, a bachelor's, a master's, a doctoral degree, whatever the case may be, sometimes it's about who you know and who knows you. Uh, so sometimes those things matter. Sometimes they don't. Uh, sometimes you have extensive experience. Sometimes you learn on the fly, i.e. everybody learning how to navigate through COVID. Uh, so it's definitely an opportunity to be quick on your feet. You can make a living. You can have a family. I know multiple women that's married, children, you know, two, three uh, things that they have going on personally. So it can be done. You know, a great friend of mine was a director of athletics. Now she's head of USA Basketball uh, and Jennifer Williams. So she also has an awesome family, husband, you know, two kids. Uh, so it can be done. Um, it's just all about the sacrifice and the extent of what you're desiring for your career and what you're desiring personally and having that championship circle around you to support you in those efforts. So it yes. can be done. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you see, we talked about um, her family structure and finding that strength from her family. And you know that and seeing seeing her own family grow and how her, her grandmother took care, took charge and took care of the family, and then being exposed um, through you know through her her, her, her mother, her aunt, etc. Um, so fam family connections are very strong. Family connections are very important. Marissa, what other connections? Um, we talk about the sisterhood. What other connections um, in terms of networking do you see as also being Particular. Um, I believe, for me, um, uh, connecting with with men in in sports, um, learning from them. Um, what I have come across is that we are seen as we don't listen. We we always um, very active to do certain stuff. So I recognize that um, learning from men is sitting back and observe, and that has done me well. Yeah. in sitting yeah. back observing sometimes it's not always just going at it but just looking at scenarios trying to analyze sometimes talking less um you observe more you know and you learn more when you do that mm -hmm. so i i i love being around the male because they have a lot of good attributes that you need to to learn so that you could be able to cooperate with them successfully yeah. um it's yeah. not that you you're trying to be against them but you want that when the clicking of the heels, it's a good respect because you're yes. able to, you know, incorporate and, and earn your place, earn and maintain your space in and amongst them. You don't want to get rid of them, definitely not, because there are yes. so many things that you can learn from them. They have been at it at the helm for years, and you'd want to know what are the strengths and weaknesses that caught you or, or kept you in, in place for all this time. I want to penetrate, so you have to camouflage like them at times doing the positive stuff 
um, yes. and yes. and getting in so that you stay within because it is vicious. It can be yes. vicious, yes. you know. So um, I I would still network with my male compartment um, and also use my international networking um, to my advantage and to help others. Um, what I must say, time. Time is always of essence, and yeah. we never know what the future would hold. And holding on to positions and holding on to to places and and, and things um, in the end is not avoid. So, what about mentoring others? I mean, if I'm not able to have the impact that I so desire, then mentoring others, you may see that impact years after when you sit back and you, you know you watch um, how things are progressing. Yes. So um, that's yeah. that's just how I think um, currently. And this is to me learning from some of the great men that I have been in touch with in the sports science and sports field. As yeah, well. and that it, it's so important to acknowledge, um, one, the, tech, the, the connectivity, but I think yeah. also, to the partnership, because it's, it's not a conversation or it's not a question of replacing you know, gender switching or replacing roles, etc. Yeah. But it is really finding that equal platform, that level playing field where we can all rise in, in, in that kind of um, in that kind of setting. And so, what I you know, what I'm wondering is the extent to which the existing structures and uh, let's say the federations, the sporting associations across um across the various sports to what extent are they also responsible for encouraging and creating an environment where women are um are encouraged they're welcomed to participate and to make a contribution at at those levels um maybe just we could start with you and and take it take it across the other ladies no problem. Definitely being intentional, um, not just checking a box, uh, not getting HR points, um, of being intentional, being consistent, um, and being strategic um, about it. Because again, you know, putting out statements or, you know, doing something one time of the year uh, or being reactionary, you know, a lot of situations and responses to them have become reactionary. Uh, so being intentional uh, with inclusion uh, of, of your, your goals and your mission of what you're trying to accomplish, uh, because there are some women who have done phenomenally across the board in, in progressing and in sport. Um, you know, you can go top to bottom to you know, collegiate sports, professional sports, and some of the women who are doing an awesome job but at the same time, don't just call us when it's time to clean things up. You know, let us be yeah. proactive as well and leaders from the beginning rather than cleaning up some mess that someone else created. Uh, so being intentional is one thing that I would say. And then, you know, as one of my mentors would say, you get in there and then have leadership get out of your way so you can do your job, you know. So having that support system and that that conversation in place to being able to go somewhere, be progressive, and have the ability to have support and to do your job. Yeah, yeah. Nazira, do you see the federations, various organizations and associations as having that critical role to play as well? Definitely. I mean, it has to start from the top and then it will trickle down into the athletes, teams, etc. Um, the IOC is a prime example of this because they recently elected their, I think, their first female vice president um, who will, you know, hopefully one day and our very own TTOC president, Brian Lewis, has been an advocate for the next president of the IOC to be a woman. And, you know, it's something that we've seen a progression. Some organizations are probably a little bit slower than others. Um, right now, the ICC, the, the CEO and the executive of the ICC are mainly male-dominated. But I don't know if you know Indra Nui. She was head of Pepsi, Pepsi in the U.S. Group, yeah. Right. She's, an, she's a director at the ICC. She loves cricket. She comes from, from, from India, I think it is. So, I mean, there's a small progression in terms of women being involved in the leadership of the organizations. 
And yes, it's slow, but I'm still glad that it's slow rather than non-existent at all. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure, for sure. It's best is um, the policies are there, whether it's international or local, and they're all connected. It's the willingness to implement or to roll out these policies. This is just my personal view because it's it's there um, and it's not like it existed just yesterday. These policies and standards to incorporate, whether it's the disabled community or even if women and all of that, the policies are there. It's the, willing, the willingness of the leadership at the time to see it through or to advocate for it. And I think that to me is where the issues are. Yeah, yeah. And as you say that, you know, I, I want to, I just want to share some some statistics, I guess, that, that have come out of um, the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. This Olympics is the first gender equal Olympic Games ever with 49% female part participation at the sporting level. Gender equality was at the forefront of the opening ceremony, which is why you would have seen um, the National Olympic Committees will you know, being encouraging to have one male and one female athlete female. jointly carry the flag. You know, I know that even in even in my circle on on social media, there were questions about you know why why have two people hold the flag and and it's you speak about intention being intentional, Jishal. Mm -hmm. They were intentional about that. The IOC is now focusing on gender equality, not just at the athlete level which is important, but also at the entourage um, level and, and specifically coaches, which is where we have been talking about understanding that space. On average, only 10% of the accredited coaches are women. That is nowhere close to, to you know, what we would want or what, yeah. what, is, what, you know, what we would like to see. Um, the objectives for 2021 into 2024 include the development of, of an action plan um, in, you know, that is in collaboration with international federations and NOCs for more female coaches to be eligible and selected to participate in mm -hmm. the championships and the Olympic Games. And I think that as an industry, the world, sports and mm -hmm. the world, need to also hold organizations accountable. So you yes. know, we all should hold the, the IOC our various institutions to our various organizations we should hold them accountable for that and i think that that level of accountability you know that tra the transparency is there it's a stated mm -hmm. intention so let's mm -hmm. all sort of be in intentional and i love that word i'm mm -hmm. going to keep using it Trisha. let us be intentional about getting it yeah getting to that point female ioc membership stand at 37.5 percent up from 21 percent. Mm -hmm. so it's moving um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the IOC executive board, the female representation starts at 33.3% uh, versus 26% uh, pre -Olympic, um, in the pre-Olympic agenda of 2020. So there are shifts, there are, mm -hmm. there are steps being taken. Um, Marissa, I definitely agree with you. It is mm -hmm. about pushing the envelope um, yeah. and saying you have the policy in place action it yes just like you, you're correct you're spot on by saying it's not just about ticking the box in hr it's not just about saying oh yeah. you know my numbers are looking good i can stand up on any podium and, and <laughs> ceo can deliver a, a stirring speech about about representation it's more than that um and i think that yes. um, i think the conversation has to has to take that turn so with all of that said, I, I, I just wanted to maybe at this stage um, give you all the opportunity to share some of your own closing thoughts with respect to how we, how we take the conversation further. What are some of the things that we, that we need to do as sport industry, sport business, sport organizations? And I also, also believe that there is a civil society and uh, 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 um, um, a, con a contribution that, the, that every single one of us as sport enthusiasts have to take. Um, Jashel, maybe I start with you. Okay, no problem. I definitely would just say reach back, pull forward. Um, remember 
when you were in a place to where, you know, you wish uh, someone would take you on and, and mentor you and be a champion for you, but also your legacy is extended as well from the people that you help. So I definitely will say a reach back, pull forward type of mentality to continue the legacy of women in sport and the continuing of the conversation, building your network, building your craft, and you know, continuing to be a blessing to others because what's for you is for you, but also leaving a legacy that reach backs and pull forward. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was a Trinidadian um, term, right? So I love the fact that we can all share in that concept. What is for you is yep. for you. It's for you. <laughs> yeah. Zero, um, maybe you can share some thoughts with us. My first statement is do not be afraid, right? Mm. Because entering into the sports arena as a woman, you will always have opposition, mm. no matter if it's your first day or your 5500 day in, in 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 sports working in the sports arena you will always face some sort of opposition some sort of rejection um and skepticism if it's what you know that you want to do as marissa and Jeshel said network network is your key if you're not sure how to network social media is your next best friend it's free right yeah. it's free use it right the thing is tweet somebody probably would see it use a hashtag whatever it is i mean we're talking yeah. about the 21st century we're living in use what you have in front of you to the best that you can use it exploit it if you wish if you want to use that word right don't give up because you will have yeah. chapters you will have people Sometimes maybe within your own family might be like, oh, that's yeah. not fitting for a for yeah. a girl to do or for a woman to do. Yeah. There's a sports yeah. and you're sweaty and you're running about or you're working yeah. with men. Um, I've had this told to me, me being a Muslim and wearing a hijab, that you're not supposed to work with men or you're not supposed to, you know, be in certain areas or certain industries. And you need to carry about yourself a certain way and dress a certain way and etc. But if you know this is what's going to make you happy, you go for it. Um, yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, you can't please other people and stifle yourself, yeah. stifle your own ambitions, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> that is a little bit slow in getting women into careers in sport other than being an athlete. Even if you're an athlete and you're looking for something after your playing days are over, Reach out to sport company, reach out to the Ministry of Sport, you know, they will guide you. I mean, they have all of our contacts now. They might know other people mm -hmm. in the industry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. here to help. Don't be afraid. Um, my my you know, my relatives always say you have an English tongue. Ask. If you're in, <laughs> if you're not sure about the language as well, Google have Google Translate. Use one of those things. But I mean, there is always somebody outside there to assist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't be afraid. That's the first thing. Don't be afraid to go for what you want. Um, and yeah, just I look forward. I, I wish all the young ladies that are looking on to this and who will probably mm -hmm. read about it afterwards, etc. You know, there are careers in sports other than being an athlete. Not everybody mm -hmm. likes to run and sweat in the sun or you know, think that an injury will have them laid up on a bed or paralyzed for the rest of their lives or whatever it is. I used to play cricket and then I realized, all right, I can't be Anissa Mohammed or I can't be Stefani Taylor and play for West mm -hmm. Indies woman, but I can yeah. write. So yes. maybe that is my next best option into being involved yeah. in West Indies cricket and being involved in cricket and in sport. So I use my ability to write mm -hmm. to, to, to get me a career in sports. So you might be someone that might like to coach or you might like to, you're good with stats. You can become an analyst. You know, there are mm -hmm. hundreds of fields in sports other than being an athlete. Do research, reach out to us. We're here to help. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I, I feel as if we, we should have just put press play and record that. <laughs> Era, and that is just 
that's a traveling message across mm -hmm. you know across the board right. because you you know you hit you hit all the nails you know co correctly mm -hmm. and i think that yeah. it's so important the, the 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 fearlessness the confidence the networking mm -hmm. yeah. ask questions you know be bold enough to ask questions we you know, there are times when, unfortunately, our culture does not encourage people to ask questions. You feel as if, you know, you, you don't want to sound like, you don't want to sound like the dumbest person in the room. You don't want to feel as if you don't know something. And so it's not always the most engaging. Um, but I think right. we do need to, you know, we need to push past that. And and um, I, I think we're seeing, we're seeing a change, certainly the, the, the generations, at the risk of dating myself, but the generations after me are a lot more courageous. Um, without a doubt, they don't need to, you know, I can see even with my own son who's 19, you know, sometimes yeah. I wonder, boy, the, the things you say to me, I could never have dreamt to say to my parents. You know, I still, <laughs> right. you know, it's no, but, you should meet my six-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't wait. And I think that that is no. where, you know, that is where we will see, we will see that change that we, we've been yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, Nazira, really thank you for that, Jishal. Thank you for your thoughts as well. Marissa, I'm turning it over to you. Tell us about your six year old son. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely has a mind of his own. Um, <laughs> I would I, I I would say to us women, including myself, including everyone, let us be more professional than personal. I think that is really important. Um, spending time with yourself, discerning spirits around you, persons, so that you know who to network with. I think um, Nazir, um, Muhammad, you would have spoken about networking. You would have, you have spoken about that, and to me, that is also key in in ensuring that you know those that you reach out to. Some people. Um, as, as my aunt would have said to me, some people don't like to see other people um, succeed. So you have to know who you're reaching out to. Take time. I talk about meaningful relationships, you know, um, and do not feel that because you reach out to someone, they have to do all the work for you. You have to be, transfer your passion, research. So spend half of your time on social media researching um, areas, places that you'd want to go, universities that offer what you are interested in. And you would only know what you are interested in if you spend time with yourself. Yes. If you spend yeah. time with yourself, you would know and you observe yourself rather than observing other persons for a minute. Observe yourself. Know what your competencies are. Know where your weaknesses are. Know where your strengths are. Know whether the threats that are around you, what they are, so that you could be able to come up with solutions to overcome these things. So it's all about you. It may sound selfish, but it's about you because in order for you to know how to, who to reach out to, if I know I need to reach out to Jeshel, it's because I would have done some reflection. It means that the projects that I'm involved in speaks to her. So I'm going to reach out to her, you know? So get in tune and we are women. We have that inner gut feeling that, sorry men, that we feel. So get in touch with that. It tells you, it, it, it gives you the barometer, something isn't right here. And, and men yep. know that they need yep. us. So we have to make them not regret um, having us in their presence to say, this doesn't feel right, you know? Um, so yes. I would stop at the point of, get to know yourself much better, know what your competencies are, work on your weaknesses, work on your threats as well, so that you minimize the barriers, you minimize the obstacles, you become more resilient and network internationally. I have dubbed myself as a global citizen. Yes, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago, but if you recognize that the obstacles are more than the opportunities, it's time to reach out to international sphere. They appreciate, I'm not saying that my Trinbagonians don't appreciate, but if you, time is short, right? And you want to be able to make an impact if you're, if you're very passionate and hungry for it, you got to reach out. You got to reach out internationally and respect your meaningful relationships to get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I wanted to add, one thing I wanted to add, right? And Marissa touched on it about educating yourselves. I yeah. think education is probably paramount. It's first on the list of anything. Yeah. 
Because yeah. I had an uncle who used to always say, if you have an education, nobody can take that out your head. They can take your title, they can take your land, they can take yeah. whatever. You, but if once you're educated, and I don't mean not everybody is equipped mentally to mm-hmm. go to university, right? We have to admit that. There are mm-hmm. several other things that you can do to educate yourself yeah. and equip yeah. yourselves to be, you know, qualified if you want to say yes. that because at the end of the day mm-hmm. you have to be qualified to get one of these jobs or to yeah. get into a career in sports yes. experience is, is is a qualification mm, right true. so even if it means that you go and you're be, you become an apprentice you become a volunteer and i will tell you volunteerism is a big thing a lot of mm-hmm. people fail to realize this but it's a big thing it will make your eyes open and see the run-ins and the behind the scenes of different mm-hmm. things that will lead you and will assist yeah. you later on in mm-hmm. life because i was mm-hmm. a volunteer at the 2007 cricket world cup that they had here in the caribbean as well as the fifa under 17 world cup and me seeing the behind the scene working of things helped equip me that when i was part of west indies cricket from 2017 till now it helped me know how to handle certain situations, both as an as a administrator in the organization and understanding it from a fan's perspective, what they would expect, what they would think. But it comes back to educating yourself. So what is educating yes. yourself academically or with experience? Educate yourself. Yep. Yep, yeah. yep. I yeah. definitely, I definitely you. agree. Um, you know, it is. You said something. You you made a point about education coming in different forms, and I think that given where we are, it is changed. So there's so much change that is happening. It's not necessarily that your education has to come in the form of a structured university. Mm-hmm. We've seen where for the last year, most of us, most most students, couldn't even walk through the halls of a university their education was online so the opportunities are are there and and there is change um if you you know for just for example if you if you look at you 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 interact with a groundsman at a cricket pitch he didn't Mm -hmm. there there is no such thing called groundsman school but i am sure (laughs) there is nobody more knowledgeable or there may be very few people more knowledgeable than him about that cricket pitch, about how that, you know, how it performs and behaves under certain certain mm-hmm. conditions. And so that experience, you know, Nazira, it's a very valuable point that you brought out. And and Jeshel spoke about it earlier in terms of education and being there, being in the mm-hmm. moment. Volunteerism is, is, is critical in, in helping you to understand. Um, my degree was not in journalism. I learned my journalism on the job, you know, spending days in a in a newsroom, mm-hmm. um, writing stories, you know, for the first for the first few months of, of 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 being a reporter, I wrote stories and the editor would look at it and okay, and it would end up in in section, you know, in section thirteen. Some of us know where section. <laughs> is. It was just a matter of experience and building that until yeah, the first yeah. time I saw my name in a newspaper, it was. Well, you you know, I I probably, you know, I I might as well have got a million dollars. It was the same thing for me. That that experience and that exposure is so valuable. And I I really, you know, I thank you all for bringing out those conversations, bringing out those thoughts and helping people to understand that, um, one, that there's a wealth of host of careers out there that, you know, they disguise it. Everything is open to you and there are different ways that you can make that journey so you know as we wrap up as we close we've been talking for a while i was i had promised you all that you know i would take an hour from your time and i've stolen a little more um so thank you for being gracious thank you to the audience who's still here with us um as i as we close off i really want to thank the three of you joshelle mitchell marissa gibson bailey and nazira mohammed for really sharing your time, um, sharing of yourself and your experiences and your stories and being really so engaging and generous in the conversation. Um, I have been, this is the fourth of, of the panel and with each one, I am really blown over and amazed at 
um, the, the, the level of, of knowledge, but also the generous, um, the generous spirit in terms of having this conversation, this discussion. I can attest uh, the, the value that um, it, it has brought to a lot of people. And so really thank you for taking the time to the, today um, and, and, you know, coming on and, and you know, just being your natural selves and, and being interesting and being funny and talking about all the different, the pitfalls and the challenges. I, I, you know, it's, yeah. it's sometimes not always easy. <laughs> Um, and, yes. you know, I really wish you, wish each of you success in your continued journey. Uh, Nazira, you're on vacation, so it's going to be back to work just now, I know. <laughs> so, and I promise you, we weren't going to talk about cricket, so I'm going to keep that promise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wait until when I come off this call to go and see what's the score, because today's the first <laughs> Pakistan, so I have to see what's going on with that. <laughs> See how she's like looking for punishment. <laughs> but yeah, I, I um I, I hear that, you know, and and we we you know we're watching we're all watching on um at, at the Olympics and really appreciating what our yes. athletes are going through. So really, you know, take the opportunity to also say good luck and you know the best good wishes to all of our athletes, Trinidad and Tobago and Caribbean athletes as well. The Caribbean has already won gold. Yeah. Um, mini triathlon, women's triathlon. So we, you know, we cross fingers crossed for a few more, um, which we which, which we look forward to. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thanks to thank our you. our sponsors and their continued um, their continued support and advocacy for the prop for our program. Girls run our girls run teaching challenge. You go girl hashtag you go girl and the Pink Rain campaign and our panel discussion series. Um, I want to thank the minister for joining this, this afternoon. Um, we can all appreciate that she has you know, very busy and hectic days, but I really want to thank her for coming in and sharing some of her thoughts and best wishes for, to, to us. And also some of her own thoughts about how we continue the conversation and, and, and progress um, under the, 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 the ministry and its work and the Pink Rain campaign and you know, taking it further so thank you minister mm -hmm. for, for for really contributing thank you to your communications team and um your and the ministry colleagues who've been working with us on um on this program um so i just want to kind of you know say thank you uh, generally join us next uh, next month uh, in august for another in our interesting conversations um on our panel discussion series. And I thank everyone and I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Hopefully the sun will be back out. I have no windows where I am. <laughs> <We're laughs> <in> the, <laughs> the, the rain is over and, and we can go outside mm -hmm. again. And um, see you later. See everyone later. Bye. Yes, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>